The latest trailer for Final Fantasy 16 recently dropped and it was announced yet again that this game is near completion, this time given a 95% completion ratio. Also, the game is apparently not coming to any other platform for at least 6 months, and this includes the PC. Accompanying this information was an interview with IGN in which the interviewer asked questions aiming to stir up controversy about race in Final Fantasy 16. Some erratic game reporting outlets also take issue with this, not by directly calling it a racist game because it is in no way promoting the idea that one race is better than the next, but instead they emphasize the lack of any persons of color with prominent roles, as if the inclusion of such is necessary for all games nowadays. And while I can respect the desire to want to play any game as someone you can relate to, even I as a mostly Hispanic, multi-ethnic person would like to see more mixed race protagonists in games, for instance, there are still some serious issues with how the development team is, is being framed as racist by many quote-unquote games journalists in primarily American outlets. I'm going to break down why this attempt to strong-arm game developers and bully them into diversity by attempting to label them as racist and force a controversy is bad for the game industry and just wrong on a basic human decency level in today's video. So first we'll read some of the controversial quotes from the interview and then look at some of the nonsensical headlines and read over a few of the articles to get an idea about what is going on first before addressing some of the main talking points. So pulling directly from the IGN interview, starting with the headline, it states Final Fantasy 16's developers open up about Game of Thrones comparisons, side quests, and representation. So right off the bat, you can see that they want to highlight the representation aspect of this, even though the interview itself maybe had like less than 10% to do with representation as a whole. And we're just going to skip through to about halfway in the interview here to actually get to the quote. It says, IGN asks, in regards to diversity in the game, can we expect to see black characters in Final Fantasy XVI or people of color in general around the trailers to date featuring mostly white characters? And I wanted to clarify on whether or not we'll expect the final game to be more diverse. And just on that point, I'd like to dispute what they say as this being a talking point already. If you look at any social media or Reddit post that that talks about this, none of this occurred until after the IGN article. So Naoki Yoshida, the producer on the game, quoted in response stating, This is a difficult question, but not one that was unexpected, seeing as diversity in entertainment media has become a much discussed topic as of late. The answer I have, however, may end up disappointing to some depending on individual expectations. Our design concept from the earliest stages of development has always heavily featured medieval Europe, incorporating historical, cultural, political, and anthropological standards that were prevalent at the time. When deciding on a setting that was best suited for the story, we wanted to tell the story of a land beset by the blight and we felt that rather than create something on a global scale it was necessary to limit the scope to a single landmass one geographically and culturally isolated from the rest of the world in an age without airplanes television or telephones so i just want to pause there because this quote right right here addresses many of the complaints that these articles have with the lack of diversity it's a small area and it's in a time that isn't as diverse as today because there's no transportation methods mainly. Not just the setting itself, but there's no apparently magical way to teleport or communicate across large continents. And then he continues stating, Due to the underlying geographical technology, the geopolitical constraints of the setting, Valstia, was never going to realistically be as diverse as say modern day Earth or even Final Fantasy XIV that has an entire planet and moon worth of nations, races, and cultures at its disposal. The isolated nature of this realm, however, does end up playing a large part in the story and is one of the reasons Valisthea's fate is tied to the rest of the world. So here he's even implying that there's narrative, more narrative reasons as to why it's as isolated as it is. He says, ultimately, we felt that while incorporating ethnic diversity into Valisthea was important, an over-incorporation into this single corner of a much larger world could end up causing a violation of narrative boundaries we originally set for ourselves. The story we are telling is a fantasy, yes, but also rooted in reality. And that's a quote that's also taken 
out of context by many of these outlets that have a problem with his statements here. He's saying that the story is a fantasy, first and foremost, but rooted in reality. Me more so stating he wants it to feel like a lived-in real world, and not just everything happens because of magic. Continuing, he says, Conversely, the Final Fantasy series of games has always inherently dealt with conflict and struggle, especially between the empowered and those used or exploited by those privileged few. A prominent trend in human history. In a game that by design allows players to experience that conflict and struggle firsthand through dynamic, realistic battles, it can be challenging to assign distinctive ethnicities to either antagonist or protagonist without triggering audience perceptions, inviting unwarranted speculation, and ultimately stoking flames of controversy. The best part of pulling inspiration directly from history, however, is that it allows us to revisit and re-examine our own past while also allowing us to create something new. So before that last line, he's pretty much stating he didn't want, or the team didn't want to assign ethnicities to these characters, to the main characters, because they know people will take that out of context and use it to say something like potentially the game is starring privileged white people about manifest destiny or something of the sort. The last paragraph ends off with him stating, in the end, we simply want the focus to be less on the outward appearance of our characters and more on who they are as a people. People who are complex and diverse in their natures, backgrounds, beliefs, personalities, and motivations. People whose stories we can resonate with. There's a diversity in Valisthea, diversity that, while not all-encompassing, is synergistic with the setting we've created and is true to the inspirations from which we are drawn. So he ends with some things that I haven't even seen in many articles, but I think might be causing some, some of the controversy, just in the way how it's worded. First off, he does mention that there is some diversity, whether that's different types of Caucasians, like Europeans and Norwegians, for instance, or if, it's some, if there are a few, a few people of color, because he hasn't outright said there are no people of color. We'll have to wait and see. But one thing that caught my attention is it says here, the setting we've created is true to the inspirations from which we are drawing. I think some people might take that out of context, stating, because he stated true to the inspirations. The inspiration doesn't mean it's real life. Like, then it would say true to real life. But it says true to the inspiration, meaning the medieval fantasy setting, stereotypically in stuff like Tolkien and Dungeons and Dragons, probably. And he doesn't say that there are no people of color, but he said that there's a reason for having the select ethnicities that are in this story. Now, I think reasonable people would not have a problem with those statements. But we're going to look at a few headlines before diving into some of the articles to see what some of these quote-unquote games journalists are talking about. So from svg.com, we have the headline, Final Fantasy 16 producers' stance on diversity has fans divided. Now the issue with this is this was not a talking point. Fans were not divided over this, and it was not even something being discussed on social media until the article came out, and IGN specifically draws attention to it. And then we have stuff like from Game Rant, which says Final Fantasy... 16's diversity controversy explained. The issue with this is that they're framing it as a controversy, which even if it is to these erratic games journalists trying to push an agenda, the fan base did not have this controversy before these headlines and articles. A lot of the discussion will quote these articles themselves as talking points. And then we have one from Games Radar. It says, Final Fantasy 16 dev says answer to diversity concerns might be disappointing and gives a disappointing answer. So we're already seeing in this headline title that they're inserting opinion into it. It's basically an opinion piece pushing an agenda. They're not reporting facts. They're not giving you quotes from the interview and telling you why to get excited. They're saying, hey, this is something I don't like, essentially. And then they're trying to make a big deal about it. But let's look a bit more into the articles themselves. We're going to start with PC Gamer. The headline says, Final Fantasy 16 is the latest game to use the historical realism excuse to exclude black characters. And I chose this one just because most of the articles will fall back to some of the points made here. In the article, the writer states, Yoshida's explanation is an unsatisfying one, but is also not historically accurate. People of color were present in medieval Europe, and 
not in some transient capacity. Just one example, the Moors lived throughout the Iberian Peninsula in southern Europe and ruled Spain for 800 years. But that's probably beside the point. It is beside the point because Yoshida didn't say we're doing it on this specific part of Europe. We're basing this on this specific area. Instead, he said they're drawing inspiration from the entire setting of medieval Europe, the fantasy setting. He didn't say they're striving to have one-to-one -one realism with the ethnic population from back in those days. Because even at that point, I would argue people would not be satisfied unless the characters were prominent characters. The people of color were prominent characters in the story. And also, no doubt, you can find areas of medieval Europe that did not have any people of color. And the article goes on to quote Yoshida stating the con some of the constraints that they gave to themselves for the setting, such as being an isolated area, a small area, and an age without planes, television, or telephones. And the author here states, because of the constraints imposed by the entirely fictional setting that Yoshida and the rest of the team created from whole cloth, Final Fantasy 16 was never going to realistically be as diverse as modern day Earth. And that last part was quoted by Yoshida. And that's true, I don't see a problem with that, but the author goes on to say this, this is not a great answer, but it's a well-worn one. A commitment to medieval realism has been used many times in the past to justify a lack of diversity in games, including big hits like The Witcher, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and Mordhal. It's a rationale that crumbles under even the most cursory examination. What does realism mean when you've got whole dragons flying around in the sky and neckers coming from the ground? One, so, once again, I'll point out that they're taking the realism quote, which I mentioned was one of their main talking points, and they're twisting it. Because that wasn't even the main reason. That was a reason that Yoshida gave as to why the world is the way it is. But that particular reason has more to do with the lack of travel and communication across continents as far as realism. Because they're a more primitive society, they don't have those kind of ways to connect people across continents. But the medieval European fantasy setting is fantasy still, and it can be whatever someone wants it to be. If it was a cast of all black people set in medieval Europe, no one would be complaining, nor should they, even if there wasn't a narrative reason for why that's the case, actually. But in this case, Yoshida has very thought out reasons as to why the ethnicity of the characters is what they are, and why it's so isolated compared to the rest of the world. And he acknowledges in the article that the world of Final Fantasy 16 does have these races in them and is a diverse place but just this specific story set in this specific small area is not as diverse as something like modern day america where even in modern day america you can find places that have upwards of 80 to 90 percent white or caucasian people there and that's in modern day and that's really the main points from that article from pc gamer we're going to move on to kotaku where they have a headline that reads, Final Fantasy 16 Dev has a terrible answer for why the game is so white. And I think you can see the issues with this already. Similar to the other ones, it paints a narrative that the answer itself is terrible, but also it goes a bit further into saying that there's a problem with games that are white, which is fairly racist. Unless the game is promoting one race being superior to another, then it's fine being whatever color primarily that it wants to be. But in the article, starts off by reading through some of Yoshida's quotes, mainly the ones referring to how, because the area of Valistia is culturally and geographically small and limited and isolated, that it wasn't going to be realistically as diverse as modern day Earth or even Final Fantasy XIV. The author says in response, Yoshida said this as if he was being asked to incorporate every race on the entire planet. And I believe that's a more reasonable ask than something like just put in a people of a specific ethnicity. At that point, you're applying favoritism to one race or another, and that is very close to racism. The author goes on to ask, why did they enforce a whites-only boundary in the first place? And we don't actually know if it is whites-only. There's a good chance, though, so I wouldn't rule it out, but nowhere does Yoshida specifically state that. And then the author reads the quote, from Yoshida stating that the world is a fantasy, yes, but also rooted in reality. And replies, which is it, Yoshida? As if he's speaking directly to Yoshida with, with anger and vitriol, apparently. You can't say that your fictional world is bound to reality. He didn't. He said it was rooted, but it's a fantasy. Um, he said it's 
rooted in reality, but the author says bound to reality and then use reality to explain why black people can't exist in Valesti. Pick a struggle and stick with it. I think it's clear already that this person is just writing the most hateful thing they can think of. I'm not sure if they actually feel this way or if they're just doing this for clickbaiting, but the arguments are incoherent. Like, what is even the argument? It's like he's just trying to have an emotional debate or just yell at, at Yoshida at this point. He goes on to make the point that's been made in a couple of other articles that there have been black or brown people in medieval Europe, such as black people being in Britain for 2,000 years, apparently, up to this point, I guess. And also that some black people, black Europeans, were canonized in the Holy Roman Empire. I assume that means there were stories written about them. Or the Iberian Peninsula that we were talking about before being under Islamic rule. Or this might not be the same area, maybe a different place in Iberia, but that's probably not a very large area, approximately 500 years ago. And he says, instead of a realistic imagining of medieval Europe, we got Final Fantasy 16. Now, in the first kind of argument he tried to lay out, he mentioned that Yoshida was responding, or he felt Yoshida was responding as if people were asking him to place people of color from all around the world. And then he points out places that are quite far apart geographically. If you go to medieval Europe and go to a particular place, I'm sure you can find a particular group of people. But that's not what Yoshida is saying. Yoshida is saying that in this particular area of his fantasy world, at this particular time period, because of the technological constraints and how isolated it is geographically, there is mostly white people. Or not a very broad depth of ethnicities here. I'll just point out at the end of the article, he states, these quotes make me feel very cynical. And I'll just stop there. That pretty much summarizes this whole article. It's a very cynical, narrow point of view spoken from a place that isn't really examining or taking into account what Yoshida is saying. It's just twisting the quotes to fit a personal narrative. Now, to IGN's credit, they themselves did not bemoan the lack of persons of color as much as these other outlets, but they did highlight the topic as their one of their main points, despite only being a small portion of the interview itself. Final Fantasy XVI, though, isn't the only game to have experienced this kind of fake controversy from quote-unquote games journalist websites. As we read earlier in one of the articles, even, they mentioned Kingdom Come Deliverance, I believe, The Witcher, I think Chivalry 2 was one, and they had Mordor listed. And none of these games were were hurt by these fake controversies because they're not real. They're manufactured by these gaming outlets, these websites, even YouTube to some extent. I saw Kind of Funny mentioning this as a controversy in their headline rundown, which is absurd. And one of the main issues with framing games like this as racist is you're, you're insulting the integrity of the developer. And you're trying to frighten and bully game developers in general into doing what amounts to a favor. Because I myself would like to see more multiracial, multi-ethnic people in games. Meaning people made up of more than one race. I'm three different races, so that would be nice to see. But these people are mainly focused on one race. In fact, these type of people who make these kind of arguments rarely ever acknowledge multi-race people at all. And you don't convince someone to do you a favor by insulting them. Yet this is what these games journalists are doing by acting like every game is now required to have people of color in them. Despite whatever the narrative is or the story is or where it's located. And we saw in the articles and headlines that they try to frame it as if many people were discussing this. But if we look on Reddit and on Twitter... These talking points didn't come about until after the IGN interview, but now there are Reddit threads and Twitter posts about these talking points, a lot of them quoting these articles themselves. And stuff like this, I think, is why games journalist websites are going out of business and getting less interviews because they end up pushing an agenda rather than highlighting the games themselves. And by doing this, they garner an audience of hate mongers that are only interested in hating everything that doesn't conform to their cynically childish worldview. And as the game sales reflect, that is a minuscule demographic of people buying games. People pushing these false narratives using these talking points would not like the same excuses being used for an Islamic or African based game to have white people in it. And we can already see such contradictions as games are instead applauded and promoted for only having people of color 
in them, but no one is asking why can't there be white people in this African-based game. And all these cynical talking points are only being levied against games like Final Fantasy 16. And just for the record, none of these games that do have, that do feature primarily people of color, none of them should be forced to change the race or ethnicity of any of their characters if they don't want to. And we have a game that's highlighted by Kotaku called Orion, The Legacy of Kari Odon, the first Afro-Fantasy action RPG on Steam. Now this game is instead promoted because of its lack of white people. I, I see one here, but it is primarily, I would say, 99% people of color. And no one here on Kotaku is making a big deal about the lack of diversity. Then we have even more AAA type games, like Far Cry 6, for instance, which I played all the way through. And it too is based in a fantasy world, meaning fictional world, but it is rooted in reality. People were often drawing comparisons to Cuba, I believe as far as their inspiration for the island that Far Cry 6 is set on. And I don't think there's any people, any white people in this story at all. But no one complained about Far Cry 6. And then this article from Game Informer highlights upcoming games starring protagonists of color from the title. We have Season, Deathloop, Volley Date, Tichia, Far Cry 6 of course, and the list goes on actually. It's not as small as you would think. But none of these games have stirred up a controversy within any of these websites due to a lack of diversity, which some of them obviously have. And I'm not pointing this out to say there should be controversy. I'm pointing this out to show the hypocrisy in the argument that these news outlets are making. It borders on racism to say that you need people of one color in the game, in all games, but you don't need to apply that same standard to any other race. Or even if you just exclude one race in particular, one ethnicity in particular, that is prejudiced against that race. Now in the interview, it was not said in so many words, but I think the dev team and all dev teams should have creative freedom to create whatever they want in regards to how their own originally created characters and world look and not be bullied into adding people of color just because a few people want to attempt to manufacture a controversy. Yoshida gave well thought out reasons as to why they will mostly be one ethnic group in Final Fantasy 16 but it doesn't matter to the people trying to push an agenda. And one thing I'd like to point out is even if Final Fantasy 16 does have people of color, unless these persons of color were given prominent roles as a positive force in the story, these people that are pushing this agenda would still complain about the representation being problematic. Basically, persons of color could not simply be background characters or any type of antagonist if they were included. Because if, if that was the case, you have those headlines reading, Final Fantasy 16 promotes problematic view of minorities. Another thing to consider that I don't see any of these articles addressing is that the development team is mostly, if not all, Japanese. Yet, these people instigating the fake controversy would no doubt demand that any persons of color be written by actual people of color, matching their ethnicity preferably and then ridicule Japanese writers for attempting to write people of color, which has happened before. Now, as nice as that might seem, that's just not realistic and cost-effective in Japan, where it's mostly Japanese people in Japan. Another point that I saw was being made by many of these race-baiting outlets also points out Yoshida does not assign an in-real-life ethnicity to the protagonist. I believe he addressed the reason why was to avoid the potential controversies that that might cause, especially from these American agenda-pushing outlets, where they would say, this white race pro that has a history of manifest destiny or white supremacy or whatever is the main star and minority characters are pushed to the background or something of this. They would use it against Final Fantasy XVI, no doubt, regardless of what the ethnicity is. And it also wouldn't really make sense in a Final Fantasy game to have Europeans, because even though that's what it is based off of in the conceptualization phase, it's a fantasy world. Europe doesn't exist in that world. They'll also try to point to real-life locations in Europe, like we mentioned earlier, to say people of color were here in medieval Europe, see that they existed, now put them in your game. While it's true that Yoshida states early concepts were inspired by medieval Europe, it's also true that people of color were not in every inch of medieval Europe, and Europe wasn't as ethnically diverse as it is today. And we can, if we look today, there are a lot of places that have very little, if not no, people of color 
in them. And as I mentioned earlier, pointing to a particular group of people in a particular area is purposefully misconstruing what was said to fit a discussion point and at the same point can be used against itself to say that there's an area without people of color and that's where the game could be based on. And the actual quote that Yoshida states when he says it's a fantasy that's rooted in reality is meant to say that there are that they are trying to make the world feel more real in the sense that most things don't happen because just magical reasons. Yes, there are some things that occur because of magic, but much like Game of Thrones, the magic aspects of the story stand out more due to how small that portion of the story is in comparison to the rest of the story elements and interpersonal relationships. By saying the game is a fantasy rooted in reality, that does not force the development team to pick a specific location and limit themselves to what that region offers as far as ethnicities are concerned, or even really anything. They're drawing inspiration from those areas. So the inspiration might only be what the area looks like as far as their architecture, or perhaps their standard of living. But these kind of talking points are made by people deliberately taking quotes out of context to fit their talking points, or made by people regurgitating incoherent thoughts from secondhand information without actually reading the interview themselves. Because if they were, I believe, if they were to read the interview, I believe they would see that this is not controversy worthy. Now I want to end the video re-emphasizing my understanding to want to play any game as someone that you can relate to. And as a mostly Hispanic, multi-ethnic person, I would like to see more mixed race protagonists. But that is not the problem itself. The issue is the demanding tone in which a few of these games journalists take in their opinion pieces, acting as if all games need to have people of color in them. And I say it specifically like that because as demonstrated before, they're not advocating for a diversity of all ethnicities in games, but just that specific people of color are included and they don't make the same argument in the other direction, which seems more racist to me than stating this small isolated area of the world did not have people of color at this particular time. If you want to encourage more games with diversity, then buy the games that are coming out with diversity in them, prop them up, spread them to your friends, but rioting about games that don't have this diversity only serves to make your argument seem incoherent and childish at best. But I'd love to hear your constructive and thoughtful opinions in the comments below, and let me know if you think I did not address a specific talking point for either side of this discussion. Give the video a like if you want to see more videos like this, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. But most of all, thanks for watching Game X Affinity.